You're listening to KEXP at 90.3 FM in Seattle, streaming at kexp.org worldwide. I'm Cheryl Waters down here in the KEXP studios with Y Oak. Welcome. Thank you so much for having us. We have had you on air so many times, but your first time here in the new studios. It's an upgrade. Yeah. It's amazing. We built it for you, so I hope you enjoy it. We appreciate it. If I I said I would have slept here last night if I had known. (laughs) And I hope you brought some laundry. Why Oak with a new album, The Louder I Call, The Faster It Runs. Want to start off with a couple songs? We would love to. This one is about trying to stay alive. It's called Lifer. You're listening to Why Oak live on KEXP. Go ahead, Jen. We're going to play another song now. It's, uh, It's called It Was Not Natural. And I'm going to play a beautiful grand piano for those of you who don't have a visual on this.
Uh, that's one of my favorite oh. songs. I love that so much. Thank you. Why Oak Live here in the KEXP studios. The new album, The Louder I Call, The Faster It Runs. Jen, that song showcases your vocal range so beautifully. I mean, we know that you can play a ton of instruments, both you and Andy. But have you had vocal training, anything formal? Because that's just incredible where you go. Oh, thank you. Um, it is noon, so bear in mind. <laughs> Uh, it's not my not my strongest hour of the day, but um, the only time I've ever had vocal training was actually when I lost my voice um, or came very close to it. Um, I got vocal cord nodules, and it was a whole terrible affair. Um, I had to stop talking for like a month, which, if you know me, you know is just unimaginable, <laughs> excruciating. Um, but yeah, so I had a little bit of coaching then, um, but that was really more just how to care for my voice and take care of myself. Um, but I most remember. of it really just comes from being a little kid, and, and you know, I was singing from the time I was talking. My, my, my mom and all my aunts and cousins, we all would just sit around and sing together all the time, so I think I started pretty early. What are you going to say? Um, the new album, uh, when I read reviews of it, the, so the word that keeps coming up for people is bright. It is such a bright and sparkling record. And Andy and Jen, you've been collaborating for 10 years or more, and you have refined your sound over these many years, and you're always expanding your palette and trying new things. And it makes me curious how you're continually being able to tap into that creativity. And I wonder if it's tricky with just two of you. I actually think maybe it makes it easier. What do you think? Yeah, um, you know, it's like we, we can kind of complete each other's sentences at this point, and we, I don't know, with, with being in the studio, we can play whatever parts we want, we can kind of like take on whatever personas we want, so, you know, we, we've never felt like we've been lacking in personalities well, yeah. to, to bring to the music. And also, I feel like for as long as we've been doing this, we don't really have a ton of experience making records with more cooks in the kitchen. And mm. it sometimes feels like it's a battle even just with the two of us between opinions. I don't, I, I imagine um, it would be really difficult to sort of bring more ideas and opinions into the fold at a certain point. But we also have our, our um, like our independent part of the process before we really get in the same physical space together. We spend a lot of time noodling and tweaking things in our individual studios, in our, in our homes and, um, that sort of gives us a chance to really dial in what we're trying to make and the ideas that we're trying to express before we expose it to someone else's critical voice. Um, so I think it's a combination of um, spending time apart and then spending time together that has, has proven to work really well for us over the years. For your last two records, I know you weren't living in the same city and you were quite far apart and it sounds like that worked really well for you. Yeah, I think it's yeah. something that we might have to actually cultivate artificially regardless of where we may or may not be living because it does work. It's a really good combination of, of, of uh, spaces and, and mindsets to be in in the process of making a record. Yeah, it's actually the last three records I think that we've made have been like bi-coastal records and uh, now we're living in the same place for the first time in like seven years. So yeah, we're going to have to create yeah, some artificial boundaries. <laughs> yeah, we're going to need some boundaries for real. <laughs> Jen, how did Flock of Dimes inform this record? Because you did everything on that one. I did. Um, well, I mean, and as you said, that that choice to do that was sort of a challenge to myself to sort of see what I would be capable of. And um, it was also uh, a learning experience for me. And I think every record that I've made, every record that we've made together has been a huge learning experience. You pick something up, many things usually up along the way, and you carry that into the next thing that you make. Um, and I, I feel very confidently, just looking back on the writing process, I feel confident that this record, this Y Oak record, couldn't have existed in the way, in its form, as it is, if I hadn't gone through that process making the Flock of Times record. Um, it was much harder than I anticipated it would be on pretty much every level. Um, it made me really appreciate uh, what a gift it is to have another set of... Uh, eyes and ears and arms and legs and, and thoughts in the process. Um, but I, yeah, what I learned in that, uh, in making that record, I think has, has made me better at, at everything that I do. I think that's just the way, you know, that kind of creative undertaking generally works. 
I was talking about how you're always evolving as a band, and of course, any good band will do that. It's a way you sort of stay alive. You have to. And stay interested, but you have broadened your sound, and so much so that in the live setting, um, it it's takes you. more than two of you to make this live music. Talk about how the new sounds came into the record and uh, what they're like on the record and then how it's how it feels making them live. So when we started making this record, we made it really fast. We made it like, um, and I think from writing to, to mastering, it was less than a year. So we really, we really burned through the time. Um, and we, for the first time ever, you know, we, we tend to go into the process um, with this idea that we're going to have this one sort of crux, like this central limitation from which the ideas sort of grow. Um, and this time, we've been doing this for long enough, and both of us have kind of got, gotten better and better at what we do and instrumentally and, and as producers and writers. And so we just decided that we weren't going to do that. We weren't going to limit ourselves in any way, really. And we weren't going to think much about how we were going to perform it after the fact, we were just going to make it, see what we got out of that process, and then go on from there. Um, unsurprisingly, we did that, and it became very clear very early on that there's just no way, unless we wanted to just be a full-on karaoke band, which we didn't really want to do, um, that we were just going to have to bring some other people into the mix. And so that's how we, we got this guy, this Will Hackney on the bass, um, and other things. And uh, yeah, so you know we've expanded, and it's been... Really, I mean, as playing as a two piece for 10 years, it's when all of a sudden you add another member to the mix, it's it feels like a complete uh revolution. <laughs> so, yeah, 50 percent more limbs. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> playing the songs live must feel so wonderful in this age of social media, which it sort of seems sort of strange because you're anything but having direct social contact yeah. with people mm -hmm. who know so much about your lives. Does playing live sort of ground you? Sometimes it does. Um, to be honest with you, my relationship with performing live can be a little bit fraught. Um, but there are times, like for example, last night at Numos, that it was just, I just felt like there's, there's always this sort of like, there's a technical element, but then there's this sort of like spiritual element to it, not to sound like a cornball, but um, when you really feel like you're at your, working at your highest level and then people are really seeing you and there's some kind of connection happening, that is really magical and it's also really rare. There's so many factors, the space, the sound. I mean, they're just, there's all these things that kind of can come into play to get in the way of that happening. And when it happens, it feels like a miracle, um, but it doesn't happen every night. So um, I'm really grateful for the times when it does happen. Like last night was, it felt really, really good to, to us on stage. Um, uh, but yeah, I don't know. It, 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 to see people, to look out, like I, you know, I did last night and see people enjoying the song singing along being visibly moved is um is just one of the one of the most one of the most precious things i can imagine well they are visibly moved and you're sharing such personal feelings personal thoughts and emotions and you said when you started to play lifer the first song that it's about trying to stay alive and what were you thinking when you were writing that i mean we could <sighs> dig into every single song on this record there's so many great messages <laughs> and i would <laughs> but do just tell us about that one cuz that's sort of central Right, to the it album. Is. It was actually the first song that I feel like we got um, where I felt like we had, like I, I had a record in me. You know, we were like, the rest of it was just, we were stumbling along. Um, but, but that song was really important. I think it started out um, in my mind, I was sort of trying to write a song about my own relationship to um, this practice or this job, the creative practice, and then the separate art, you know, of making that into um, something that you do uh, for other people as well, um, and all of the complications that come into play there. But simultaneously, there was someone in my life um, who has been for a very long time very close to me who's been struggling a lot with mental illness and addiction and... Um, uh, and so as I was writing it, it sort of started to become this parallel examination of um, how much more difficult it is for some people to stay alive and thrive in the world for any number of reasons, reasons that are completely out of your control. And then sort of observing that as a source of inspiration for me in my relatively easy life uh, to just kind of suck it up and, <laughs> and continue onward. Um, you know, everyone has their particular challenges that they have to deal with. Um, and I think having some perspective about how much worse those challenges could really be and are for some people um, is helpful for me. And so that's sort of, um, I mean, it's about other things too, but that's a kind of good 
I think, summary of what that song is about. Well, there's so many great songs on there, and that one Thank you. is really wonderful. The new album, The Louder I Call, The Faster It Runs. We've got Y Oak Live here in the KEXP studios. What do we got next? We got another one. This is actually one of my favorite ones to play. I think it's one of my favorite ones on the record. It's, uh, it's called You of All People. Y Oak Live on KEXP. This is going to be our last song. It's been such a pleasure being here. Thank you so much to everyone at this amazing station for having us in to play some songs this morning. And thanks to all of you Invisible Radio people. This is the title track from our record. It's called The Louder I Call, The Faster It Runs.
That was great. Thank you. Why Oak live on KEXP, The Louder I Call, The Faster It Runs, the new album out on Merge. I love that title. Tell Thank me about so that. Much. Oh, I will tell you about that. It's kind of a fun story, which is that um, I, when we were writing uh, this song, I, I finally came up with the hook for it. And I then occurred to me that it might be a really good uh, summation of the entire record. Um, so I pitched it to Andy. And he said, um, oh, cool, uh, that is, it's like um, the more you want something, the harder you're trying to get it, so you're chasing it. Um, and uh, that was something that never occurred to me because in my mind it was that I'm being chased and that something's trying to get me and the louder I call for help, the, the easier it is for that thing to find me. And the second I heard that there was actually these two dual meanings in, inherent in the in, entire phrase that I, I realized it was the perfect title for the record. So um, depending on who you are and where you're at in your life, um, I think it's a great litmus test for, for a personality, which one they tend to, to adhere to. I had read that. And for myself, I want to be where you are <laughs> with it. And I think on my journey of personal growth, um, I'm maybe somewhere in the middle closer <laughs> to where Andy yeah. sees it. But so I found that fascinating too. Yeah. yeah and I, I think I, we're, we're all in there at different points in our life too. Yeah. I don't know if either one is exactly where you want to be, but it's just, <laughs> it's like the twin poles of anxiety. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. It's always so fantastic to see you. Oh, it's so good to be here. Thank you so much for having us. And you are tuned in to KEXP. It's listener-powered radio, Y Oak, here with us today. So great. This is KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.